Today, we are going to be looking at the cheapest Xeon that I've ever taken a look at here at Tech Yes City. In fact, this Xeon's so cheap, on AliExpress, it's going for 50 cents posted worldwide. And at this price, I think they've got to be losing money on this chip because surely it costs more than 50 cents to post something international. But you may be looking at my hand up until this point and wondering, why do I have so many of these Xeons and i7-3820s? And the answer is, whenever I actually go PC parts hunting, sometimes there'll be people giving away chips and they'll tell me something like this, mate, I've got some free CPUs for you and you're gonna love them. And so my reaction is something like, all right, let's, uh, let's check out what you got. And that's when they pull out the i7-3820. And then my reaction, I'm thinking in the back of my head, something like this. And you might think, what's with the negative reaction to these CPUs? And it's actually not a negative reaction, it's more so I lost the lottery because the platform that it's based on is called X79. Now this was released as Intel's HEDT platform back with these CPUs. And the four core eight threaded i7-3820, as well as the four core eight threaded E5-1620 were the entry level CPUs for this platform. So when people buy an X79 motherboard nowadays, they're actually quite expensive still. And so this means if a person wants an X79 motherboard, they're usually going to spend a few dollars extra and go for say a six core 12 threaded Xeon or even go for the eight core 16 threaded Xeon, the amazing jaw dropping 1680V2. However, if we're looking at the i7-3820 versus the E5-1620, although they appear the same on paper, it isn't until we go down and look at the specs a little bit closer that we do see two crucial differences. The Xeon chip actually carries better memory support in that it supports also ECC memory. And on top of that, the Sandy Bridge variant actually has PCI generation three support over the i7-3820, which only carries PCI 2.0 support. So in other words, the 50 cent CPU is actually more desirable for personal use than the $9 i7-3820. They're actually both extremely cheap CPUs at this time. And this is because the X79 platform. In fact, X79 motherboards still to this date can run up hundreds of dollars. And the reason for this is because they're just such a nostalgic platform where a lot of people just wanna get the platform and try out some different overclocking features as well as testing out different compatibilities with older hardware where perhaps they even need that X79 platform. So the motherboard itself still commands quite a premium. And with that, if someone's going to go out and pay a premium on a motherboard, then they're probably not going to get the least desirable CPU on that platform when even the six core 12 threaded Xeons, the 1650s are only a few dollars more than the 1620 and that's still a fraction of the cost of the motherboard. Though just because something's cheap and the majority of people don't want it, that doesn't mean I don't want it. In fact, I'm gonna be testing out this CPU here today with a GTX 1070. And you know what? We might as well add an RTX 3060 12 gig on top on a motherboard that we got from a dumpster as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM, DDR3, that we pulled from a dumpster, as well as the Thermaltake cooler that if you guys watched a previous video we did with an orange fan, that fan came off this cooler that we got from a dumpster as well. So this is like a dumpster package that has literally cost me no money. So we got a little free makeup here that we're gonna test at the end of this video versus the Ryzen 9 7950X3D to see how much performance you could be potentially missing out if you were to couple, say, a GTX 1070 with this CPU. Let's get straight into those benchmarks. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. And now we just have to find out which games we want to start testing out. And for this, we're going to go to the top charts on Steam as well as Epic and see what's on there. And we got Fortnite there, 3 million players online. Counter-Strike 2, over half a million. Dota 2, eh, you can run Dota 2 on a potato. Apex Legends, sure, we'll throw that in the basket. We got Baldur's Gate 3 and we got Cyberpunk 2077. So there's our five games of choice. Let the benchmarking begin. Yeah. 
And after some excruciating benchmarking, we have results for you guys where depending on the game and depending on the resolution, the 3820 can differ by quite a lot to the 7950X 3D. Now, don't get me wrong, a 7950X 3D is really no comparison, right? A $650 CPU versus a 50 cent CPU, but we've got it there just for a baseline to know how much performance you could be missing out on with a very, what I would consider reasonable GTX 1070 or the most popular GPU on the market at the moment, the RTX 3060. So let's get into Fortnite here where we've tested out 1080p and 1440p at high settings. And here is where in creative mode, this is where on the GTX 1070, we actually didn't see that big of a difference between the 7950X 3D and the E5 1620 Xeon. However, if we go across to the RTX 3060, here's where, especially at 1080p, the difference does start to creep up a bit. But again, back to that price comparison, it isn't too big of a deal. The one thing I decided to test, since creative mode is quite easy on the CPU, decided to lo load into a battle royal. And here's where the E5 1620 was actually starting to struggle at these high settings at 1080p. So I decided to drop it down to low settings and this is where the game actually played perfectly fine, which is great to see for a Unreal Engine 5 title like Fortnite playing so well on an older CPU like this 50 cent Xeon. Though, moving on to the next title here, Apex Legends. This is probably gonna be the best case scenario for the 50 cent Xeon where at 1080p and 1440p high settings, this is where it was really doing a good job with the GTX 1070 and then going over to the RTX 3060 showed that it didn't lose a whole lot of FPS, especially at 1440p. Though moving across to 1080p, the difference did start to open up a bit there. And this sort of pretty much matches the experience of Cyberpunk 2077, except the GTX 1070 was coming pretty much neck and neck with the 7950X 3D and the 50 cent Xeon here at both 1080p and 1440p, though stepping things up to the RTX 3060 showed that at 1080p, was actually quite a sizable difference. But even with the 0.1% uh, lows at 1440p, the E5-1620 did start to struggle a little bit. So we look at the charts, it would probably seem like Cyberpunk's actually the better case where there's not much of a difference. But Apex Legends, I do put that up ahead because I would be playing personally this game with this CPU and a GTX 1070 or an RTX 3060. It was actually extremely playable, extremely smooth FPS. Though, let's talk about smooth FPS and where things actually start to go wrong for this little Xeon that could. And this is with Counter-Strike 2. And here is where at 1080p and 1440p, we saw a frame pacing issue. There was something going on here, as you can see with this frame rate graph, which I'll show you on the screen. We're getting a lot lower FPS at 1080p on both the RTX 3060 and the GTX 1070. This was the worst case scenario in today's benchmarks. And the stuttering was also quite noticeable, especially even if we got to uh, 1440p, that didn't resolve the issue either. And those 0.1% lows were actually quite low in all scenarios here. Though the 7950X 3D, of course, doing a great job maxing out the GPU in any case scenario. However, I did decide to change things just down to low settings, see if that would fix the issue. And unfortunately, it pretty much gave out the same FPS. So this is an issue with older CPUs. I'm guessing that they're trying to force the AVX2 instruction sets into the game, and that's causing issues with the older CPUs that don't support this instruction set. So they're kind of patching them in and it's not giving out an ideal experience. That would be my guess, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Let's get on to the final result here. And this is from Baldur's Gate 3, where I do a very different test here at Tokyo City. I find this um, Bilber bang thing and they just, it just creates this scenario that is so not just GPU heavy, but extremely CPU heavy too. It's some of the hardest benchmarking you'll ever do in this game. And here is where we get, even on the 7950X 3D, the best case scenario is 58 average FPS in this benchmark and a 0.1% low of three. That's right, three, even on the mighty 7950X 3D. Now, looking at the numbers here, the differences on the RTX 3060 do open up 
at 1080p, but when we go to 1440p, the differences do start to close. But keep in mind, after this benchmark is finished, the FPS does start to normalize and it's a completely playable experience on all these CPU and GPU configurations here. And of course, you've got the option to take it down to lower settings. Though the final benchmark we're gonna throw up to you guys is the power consumption, the differences with the RTX 3060 on both these CPUs in the games and the E5 1620, unfortunately, is a power hungry chip being quite a few years old now. And on idle as well, it does use up more power consumption. So with all that aside, let's move over now to a conclusion with our beautiful 50 cent Xeon. So now with those benchmarks out of the way, it's time to analyze our little 50 cent Xeon here and look at what's going on. Because at 50 cents, at that price, you're getting very good performance for your dollar. But there are cons and there are pros. So we will start off with the cons here. And the biggest thing would be the compatibility. Let's talk a little bit more about this. We don't have the AVX2 instruction sets. And so some titles, you may come into titles in the future that just flat out won't boot. But also if we look at Counter-Strike 2, I believe the issues we were having here was to do with the fact that it doesn't have AVX2 in this game needs it for maximum performance. But also on top of that, they've patched the game to work with these older CPUs because CS2, just like CSGO has a huge player base. And so you'll still get decent performance. The game wasn't unplayable, it just had frame pacing issues, which hopefully in a few months gets patched out and allows it to be smoother, but that's not to stop the fact that you will get reduced FPS in some of these latest and greatest titles. Though the second con would be with third generation, second generation, and first generation Intel i7s and things like the Xeons here, this one we used here today was technically a second generation, which is Sandy Bridge, but then, because it's x79, it's an i7-3820, so it's confusing because it's still second generation, but it's got the 3000 moniker on the i7 equivalent. But the compatibility, going further into that, we've got no support here for VR, virtual reality. So if you sell a PC and someone wants to use VR with it, they're gonna plug in their headset and it's just flat out not going to work. So that's another reason why I usually from here on in, and actually in the last couple of years, I've been looking at fourth gen and onwards to do my builds, my budget PC builds with, because I don't run into compatibility issues from clients and I don't run into issues if they wanna plug up their VR headsets, even on extremely inexpensive motherboards and something like an i7-4770. So the compatibility, that's the biggest con with this old stuff. I mean, the power and efficiency, we can look at that but for something that's so old, I would say it actually did a pretty good job with the power. It was only really with the RTX 3060 using up about 30 watts more than a 7950X 3D, which is one of the most power efficient CPUs on the market right now. And if you look at the cost difference, even on the CPU alone, it's going to take you probably a hundred years of just straight gaming forever to make up that difference in power. I mean, don't quote me on that, but at this point, it's a mute point for 30 watts versus the price difference of going with an older machine, which in this case, at Tech Air City, we built this thing for virtually nothing. I mean, most of the stuff here was from the dumpster. And so that's where it's gonna play into the benefits here, the pros of this 50 cent Xeon. If you've got an X79 motherboard that someone's given to you or you find something that's abandoned on the side of the road or someone's throwing it in the dumpster and you pick it up, it's got an X79 motherboard, doesn't boot, and maybe the CPU's busted, someone's overclocked that CPU, burnt it out, then this is a great little replacement and you can't go wrong at 50 cents. If you just wanna get into some PC gaming, you've already sort of got the other gear sussed out and you can make use of a 50 cent CPU then why not? I mean, I would pair it personally with the Max, a GTX 1070, like we did here today. Any more, you're kind of starting to lose a lot of FPS, leaving it on the table there. But if you get a cheap GTX 1070 or even a GTX 1066 gig or something like that, you can have a great little experience at 1080p, even in some of the latest titles with an E5-1620. Now, the i7-3820 is gonna be very similar. I'd imagine the difference between these two CPUs is pretty much gonna be a nothing burger, even though the Xeon is technically more desirable. But ultimately, when it comes down to a Xeon, it's one simple formula, and that is price, performance, 
bang for your buck and this is what you are always getting with Xeon unless of course the game just doesn't boot then you're getting technically infinity loss of price performance but this 50 cent Xeon it can get up and boogie still in 2023 and you guys actually wanted me to check out more Xeons so do let us know in the comment section below which Xeons you really want to see tested and I can put them to the metal here at Tech Yes City and we can see what kind of FPS you can get but also I'll say one more final thing what I got here today is a PC where I'm really only putting in the case the GPU and the power supply and the SSD and I got a whole build that plays games great and in fact if I couple in a monitor and keyboard I've got a great little flip on my hands all because someone didn't want an x79 motherboard they didn't want the RAM and they just chucked away the whole PC because it probably didn't boot in the first place and it had some issues and so the issues are usually on a lot of these older uh, PCs is that maybe something's just not plugged in properly or a RAM stick dies or something like that and there's just a treasure trove of hardware remaining. Though this advice now ties perfectly in with the outro here and this is I'm going to say one thing don't go out and overpay for x79 it's not worth it I would only get x79 if the price is really good I get say for instance the memory the CPU the cooler everything for a really good price of like 50 USD I wouldn't go out and pay hundred dollars for an x79 motherboard alone and i think if we look at ebay pricing for x79 motherboards especially the good ones like a zeus gigabyte etc you're not going to get those boards for really cheap on ebay because a lot of people are looking for them and they're usually sort of becoming somewhat of a fun tool for people who just want to go back down memory lane and try some different sort of tuning and also this will go in with the question of the day perfectly which comes from deus ex and they ask is Jingsha a good brand for the price and this is where you can get Jingsha motherboards that are x79 boards brand new that will be off Aliexpress shipped to your door but even then for that price I would look at just getting into straight up getting into the fourth gen and if you can get into the x99 motherboards from Jingsha and whatnot because those chips are just going to have a lot more longevity than third and second gen which in this case third and second gen are both on x79 just know one thing you want to go for code name Haswell or later when you're looking at Xeons and both Intel i7s and i5s and things like that that would be my advice going forward if you're paying good money for the stuff even though I like a Xeon especially at 50 cents I would only ever entertain getting this Xeon if everything else is extremely cheap too and I just need a replacement CPU. But to answer the question directly, Jingsha, they're a decent motherboard. I personally prefer, if I can, getting a Soyo motherboard or getting a One and Z. I've had better experiences on those than the Jingsha motherboards. But that being said, I haven't had a Jingsha board fail on me. It's actually been just the limitations on tuning in the BIOS it's very limited I would only really recommend a Jinxia board if you just want to put the CPU and RAM in and leave it at that do no tuning and enjoy your setup anyhow guys hope that answers that question and I hope you enjoyed today's video with the return to the Xeon if you did then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments section below what are your thoughts on today's video and the testing love reading your thoughts and opinions as I thought I just make it more relevant rather than testing out an RTX 4090 and these two CPUs because no one in their right mind is going to put a 50 cent Xeon and couple it with an RTX 4090. I mean, some channels might do it out there for lols, but we already know what the end result's going to be. And it's going to be pretty much the same FPS as what we got here today because the little Xeon really couldn't even handle an RTX 3060. Anyhow, guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring the bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.